Amen. I'd like to invite our Advent reader to come, our liturgist. First of all, before I read from God's Word here, I went to Branson a few weeks ago, and I always have to come back with a souvenir. They had jewelry down there, and it's a, it's a line that has earrings, bracelets, necklaces, and the little saying on the box is, if you have God in your heart, God will be in your life. And I just, I had to have it, so came home with some of that. And I think as we read through this, Hopefully you will invite God into your heart. So it looks like page 1038, Joel 2, 12, and 13. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. And then in the New Testament towards the back, page 88, Luke 11, 13. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Thank you, Sherry. I want to invite you as well. In that Joel chapter, we want to read just a little bit further in that, if you would. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. It's still, it's on page 1039. Uh, God's spirit poured out, it says, and then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Your old men shall what? Dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Um, that, that speaks particularly to what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'll, I'll confess that this morning, technology was not my friend and my computer would not print. Uh, it, it worked flawlessly to print the prayer cards. How many of you have a prayer card? It printed, it worked flawlessly to print those. And then when it came to print my sermon notes, it would not print. So uh, today I'll be doing this electronically. And so bear with me. I'm not text messaging or uh, taking pictures of anyone. We're just gonna read through. I'm not Facebooking either for that matter. Um, <clears throat> This morning, our, our story of Joel, a prophet, and, and oftentimes, Joel, we believe that Joel would be, he would be preaching from the tabernacle steps, from the temple steps. He would be standing out front and making these proclamations. Now, where do you think Joel comes up with what to say when addressing the people? You think it comes from the Torah, right? The first, first books of the Bible? Yes. But then it also comes from visions and dreams that he has. And, and I want to encourage you. I wonder, how many of you, when is the last time you had a dream? When's the last time? How many of you have had a dream in the past week? Okay. All right. Now, we can talk about the dreams that you dream while you're sleeping. But how many of you have come up with a dream for something in your life? A dream or a vision would be a one way of putting it. I, I ran across an article this morning that said this. Uh, uh, a lady was explaining to her daughter, Mommy, what do you do at work? She says, well, I'm an art teacher at college, and I teach adults how to draw. And her little six-year-old daughter said, but Mom, how did they forget so quickly? <laughs> Dreaming is kind of like that. Sometimes we forget to dream. We get stuck in the 
and the adulting. That's, that's one of my favorite new ways of describing our world uh, is adulting. I, I, I've heard some people say, you know, I think I'll go home and quit adulting today. And I hope that's an excuse to dream, right? Adults dream, but, but here's this grand vision that Joel paints. He says, and old men will dream dreams. Now that means men and women both. The reality is, is that some of us can grow past the stage of dreaming again. I wanna read you a, a quick story that will help, uh, help you understand, maybe we can frame this correctly, of, of the difference between or the transition of a dream to a vision. I wanna, I wanna read this for you. There, it turned the way it was supposed to, and we're almost there. I do not like using technology like this for sermons. I'll let the record show. Uh, Martin's Dream, it's called. Martin wanted somewhere to play. He lived in a big city where there was lots of streets full of houses. Not many people had gardens because the houses had been built very close together. There were streets full of shops, and there were busy roads and lots of cars. There were even car parks. There was a school with a playground, but the gate to the playground was locked when the school was closed. There was a park, but it was a long way away, and it was more for sitting in than playing in. Not very far away, there was an old house called Applegarth, which was falling down. Around the house was a big garden. Martin and his friends sometimes played in the garden. But last week, some people had come and put up a big fence around the garden. Martin asked one of the people what was happening, and the people told him that soon the house was going to be pulled down and a new supermarket and car park built on the site. Martin went home, and he talked to his mom. Why build a supermarket, Mom? They already had a big one right down the road, and there's no need for another one. His mom agreed, and they talked about all the problems Martin was having, finding somewhere to play. And then Martin's mom said that perhaps they should write to the council. Martin was not sure what this meant, this council thing, but his mom explained to him that the people who made decisions about what could be built in the city were the council. It was their job to listen to what people thought about things that had happened in the city and then decide what to do. Martin's mom said that someone, sometimes people send a petition to the council. This meant that they found lots of people who agreed with what they were saying and got them to sign a piece of paper to say so. Martin thought that the petition was a good idea, and he decided to make one. Martin and his mom worked out what to put on the paper. At the top it said, children in this city need somewhere safe to play. We don't need another super supermarket. Why can't Applegarth be turned into a park? Martin took the paper around to his friends and their neighbors, and nearly everybody signed it and, it, and wrote down their address. Lots of people heard about the petition, and Martin printed out more pages. And lots more people signed. In two weeks, there were 1,374 names on the page. Martin's mom, she rang up the counselor who said, uh, said that she would come around to Martin's house and collect a petition. Martin's mom rang the local paper, and Martin involved, invited lots of his friends around. A photographer arrived, and later the week, the local paper had a picture of Martin and the counselor and Martin's friend waving pages of the petition. The counselor told Martin that she would take his petition to the next council meeting. Martin was going with his mom to the next meeting to see what happened. Martin's dream about a safe place to play might come true. I wonder, I wonder you and I, um, if when is the last time we've seen a dream become a vision, and then become a reality. This week in Advent, uh, this, this Advent season, I have a dream for all of us. The dream is that we would be able to pray with someone out loud. Now, I realize that for many of you, that might not be something you're used to doing. I don't know, but I've heard there are other people in the world that are not extroverted like I am, that are not afraid to walk up to a perfectly, perfectly normal stranger and introduce themselves. 
and carry on a conversation about the weather and all of those things. I've, I've heard that there are people like that. Is, could it be true? That some folks maybe are not comfortable praying out loud. I heard that there are folks who putting your hand on someone else's shoulder and saying a prayer would be a really big step. How many of you took a prayer card home last week? Did you take those home? How many of you got a chance to pray out loud with someone? Okay, did any of you lose sleep? Did God send someone into your life this week that you were to pray for? See, I have an idea in my mind. Last week when we heard the story about Daniel, the story was that, that the king had not followed through by rescinding the orders. And, and while Daniel's in the lion's den, do you remember the problem the king had? Anybody remember? The king lost sleep. He couldn't sleep the entire night through. He had done something that he wasn't supposed to do and he knew it. And he waited and it made him uncomfortable and I believe that that's the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, I, I, went, I said all of that to say this, two things. Number one, I wanna invite you to pray out loud for someone. I wanna invite you maybe to use the card or maybe to do it yourself. Uh, some of you, uh, our confirmation class, we looked up the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. It's a, it's a map for prayer. Adoration, confession, supplication, and thanksgiving. Adoration, confession, supplication, and thanksgiving. It's kind of a, a general outline of some of the things that could be in prayer. You can skip one or the other, but generally you'll have all of those in your prayer. Our prayers are simple on these cards. And I wanna encourage you that you would have the ability to have the same power that God has in those around you. I imagine what it would look like when someone who's facing a problem comes and says, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling with this health concern. How many of you are able to fix the things that are wrong with people? Any of you? Yeah, me neither. Me neither, I, I, I don't have that power, right? I don't have the power to fix people, but what I have is God's power. How many of you believe God can fix people? I think that there was a moment in time when God prepared a table for his disciples. And he has this dream, this vision of what the world someday is gonna look like. He has this idea in his mind as God and, he, and I think he knows more than we know, right? You and I have to, we have to dream and we have to hope. But I think God knew what would happen. If the people that loved him would continue to dream and hope, if the old men, as Joel says, would begin to dream dreams, He takes the bread and the cup and in a moment unlike any other in history, he breaks the bread with his disciples and he says, this is my body torn apart and it's broken for you. He takes the cup it's the cup of forgiveness. No one at the meal is allowed to drink it. And he takes it and he pours it out and he says, look, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. He says, this is, this is a complete and different vision from anything you've ever seen before. This is all new. So this my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. A dream, a vision 
And in every, almost every church in the world, often once a month, some every single week, some three times a year, this happens. This moment to come to the Lord's table changes people. 